Why are we here? How did we get here? Questions that we have been pondering since the beginning of human history. There are no easy answers. There are more questions than answers. To address these questions, first we have to travel back in time. How far do we have to travel back? That depends who you ask. A very popular theory that tries to explain where it all began is the Big Bang Theory. This theory is just one of many theories that exist in trying to explain the questions. Namely, the pulsating theory and steady state theory. We have to be clear about one important fact. That is, theories are not facts. It is kind of a mathematical modeling based on known facts and unknown assumptions. It is this assumptions part that makes these theories uncertain and ever-changing. Let us analyze the unknown assumptions. There is more to the cosmos than meets the eye. Of all the matters, about 80% of the matter in the universe is invisible to telescopes. Yet, its gravitational influence is manifest in the orbital speeds of stars around galaxies and in the motions of clusters of galaxies. This unknown is called dark matter. Despite decades of effort, no one knows what this dark matter really is. Many scientists think it is likely that the mystery will be solved with the discovery of new kinds of subatomic particles, types necessarily different from those composing atoms of the ordinary matter all around us. In the early 1990s, one thing was fairly certain about the expansion of the universe. It might have enough energy density to stop its expansion and recollapse. It might have so little energy density that it would never stop expanding, but gravity was certain to slow the expansion as time went on. Granted, the slowing had not been observed, but, theoretically, the universe had to slow. The universe is full of matter, and the attractive force of gravity pulls all matter together. Then came 1998, and the Hubble Space Telescope observations a very distant supernovae that showed that, a long time ago, the universe was actually expanding more slowly than it is today. So the expansion of the universe has not been slowing due to gravity, as everyone thought, it has been accelerating. No one expected this, no one knew how to explain it. Eventually, theorists came up with three sorts of explanations. Maybe it was a result of a long discarded version of Einstein's theory of gravity, one that contained what was called cosmological constant. 
Maybe there was some strange kind of energy fluid that filled space. Maybe there is something wrong with Einstein's theory of gravity and a new theory could include some kind of field that creates this cosmic acceleration. Theorists still don't know what the correct explanation is, but they have given the solution a name. It is called dark energy. So let us look at the total distribution of known and unknown universe. It turns out that roughly 68% of the universe is dark energy. Dark matter makes up about 27%. The rest, everything on Earth, Everything ever observed with all of our instruments, all normal matter, adds up to less than 5% of the universe. So we only understand 5% of the universe? With such a little understanding of the universe, we cannot meaningfully answer questions like what caused Big Bang or what was before Big Bang? Next, let us look at how did we get here. We have to fast forward a little bit to a point where a very popular theory tries to explain how did we get here. Before we look at this theory, we should Again, remember that theories are not facts. Theories, proved beyond reasonable doubts, are facts. A very popular theory of how did we get here is the theory of evolution. Charles Darwin, in his the origin of species and the descent of man presented his theory of evolution. He presented the theory of the mechanism of natural selection or survival of the fittest. Darwinism maintains that living things were not created but came into being by chance. According to this theory, life started from first cell. Inanimate matter must have produced a living cell as a result of coincidence. The cell then evolved over millions of years and resulted in all the life forms we see today, as well as all the life forms that were extinct. Darwin believed in the transferring of traits of one species to the other. This theory maintains that living creatures passed on the traits they acquired during lifetime to the next generation. Giraffes evolved from antelopes and bears transformed into whales. However, the conditions required for the formation of cell from an inanimate matter are too great in quantity to be explained away by coincidences. The DNA molecule is so complex that it cannot be accidental or coincidental. Mutation of DNA, according to the modern synthetic theory, do not cause living beings to develop. On the contrary, they are always harmful. Furthermore, 
According to this theory, every living species has sprung from a predecessor. However, no transitional forms have yet been uncovered. That is, we have not found any species that is half bear and half whale. On the contrary, the British paleontologist Drigviega in The Nature of the Fossil Record admits that the fossil records shows not gradual evolution, but the sudden explosion of one group at the expense of another. This is just the opposite of Darwin's assumptions. Looking at the theory of evolution objectively gives us the following conclusion. 1. The Darwinism theory cannot scientifically explain how life originated on Earth. 2. No scientific finding shows that the evolutionary mechanism proposed by the theory have any evolutionary power at all. 3. The fossil record provided proves the exact opposite of what the theory suggests. So, scientifically, we do not know, with 100% certainty, how and what caused Big Bang without big assumptions. We do not know, with 100% certainty, what was before Big Bang, without big assumptions? We do not know, with 100% certainty, how and what caused the beginning of life, without big assumptions. Assumptions are a big part of our belief to explain our existence. Since we are willing to accept assumptions, sometimes correctly or incorrectly to be true, then we may also not discard one other important theory that explains all the questions that were asked. That is, why are we here and how did we get here? The creation theory attempts to explain it all. The facts of creation theory are, some very special people left us with a very special theory about how it all began. We know that the theories date back at least 1400 years or older. The fact is that they attempt to answer all the questions. However, the assumption in the creation theory is that they are telling the truth. Just like the assumptions that are built into the Big Bang Theory and the theory of evolution, this assumption of being true is also built into the creation theory. Like all other theories, one may take caution not to discard the creation theory. Something we all need to ponder seriously and objectively. <laughs> وجعلنا من الماء كل شيء حي أفلا يؤمنون. Have those who disbelieved not considered that the heavens and the earth were a joined entity, and we separated them and made from water every living thing? Then will they not believe?
وَجَعَلْنَا فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَ أَن تَمِيدَ بِهِمْ وَجَعَلْنَا فِيهَا فِجَاجًا سُبُلًا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَهْتَدُونَ And we placed within the earth firmly set mountains, lest it should shift with them. And we made therein mountain passes as roads that they might be guided. وَجَعَلْنَا السَّمَاءَ سَقْفًا and we made the sky a protected ceiling, but they from its signs are turning away. And it is he who created the night and the day, and the sun and the moon. All heavenly bodies in an orbit are swimming. And we did not grant to any man before you eternity on earth. So if you die, would they be eternal? كل نفس ذائقة الموت ونبلوكم بالشر والخير ف...